Hey you guys, I'm Dr. Sharma and we're about to talk about pneumonia. Pneumonia is a common worldwide condition that causes 450 million infections worldwide and up to 4 million deaths each year. Pneumonia infects a wide range of ages, but most commonly infects those under the age of 5 and over the age of 70. So what is pneumonia? Well, pneumonia is an infection of the lungs. In fact, the etymology of pneumon is from the Greek word for air or wind. The lungs contain tiny little alveoli, which are super important for oxygen exchange. So in order to really understand pneumonia, let's talk about these alveoli for a second. The alveoli are kind of like little units or oxygen exchange factories. But in order for oxygen rich air to make its way down to these units, we have respiratory bronchioles, which are kind of like the side streets transporting oxygen with air. Higher up from the side streets, we have mini highways, which also lead up to the main highway or the trachea. And all of this transports oxygen down to that unit. Now here comes the important part. All that oxygen that comes into our alveoli has to be filtered. And that filtration process is very important for keeping pathogens out of our lungs. In fact, it's so important that even the humidity of our mouth traps particles coming in when we breathe and our nose contains hairs that are mucus covered in order to trap respiratory droplets that could contain bacteria or viruses. In addition, the lining of our airways also contains little cilia to do the same, which are also like little hairs. Unfortunately, this system isn't perfect, and sometimes bacteria and pathogens from respiratory droplets or just from the air that we breathe can actually reach the alveoli. And this can occur in states of a weakened immune system or by some other cause. Because of the nice humid atmosphere of our lungs, these pathogens can brew an infection. Now you may not know this, but there are actually three main types of pneumonia, which we're going to talk about. So to quickly review, we have the main trachea, our bronchioles, which are going to transport that oxygen down to the alveoli or the oxygen exchange centers. It's important to know this anatomy. The first type of infection is called a lobar pneumonia. This lobar pneumonia causes consolidation or actual gunk inside of the lungs and usually infects one lobe. Essentially, the bacteria is able to grow and cause phlegm or pus inside of the alveoli. And this can literally be coughed up. Sounds kind of gross, right? The big and most common causative bacteria that causes this type of pneumonia is called Streptococcus pneumonia. In fact, pneumonia is in the name. Here is an example of a lobar pneumonia on a chest x-ray. Notice how it is consolidating one lobe over the right side of the chest. The second type of pneumonia is called bronchopneumonia. Now the reason we call it this is because if we were to draw out the alveoli and the bronchioles again, this infection infects the bronchiolar air spaces sort of close to the alveoli, not quite as consolidative as the lobar pneumonia. Because of this pattern of infection, you'll get what's called patchy infiltrates throughout the lungs. Now again, some of the culprit pathogens include our friend Streptococcus pneumonia, but also include other types such as Staph aureus, which is another bacteria that can cause this type of infection. Here is a chest x-ray demonstrating more of this patchy appearance, which can occur in part of or diffusely through all of the lungs. The third pattern of pneumonia is called atypical or interstitial pneumonia. If we were to draw out our alveoli again, this type of infection would affect the interstitium or the connective tissue within the lungs supporting the alveoli and the bronchioles. This type of infection is also called a walking pneumonia because the symptoms are not as bad and sometimes the patients who have this type of pneumonia are essentially walking around carrying on their daily lives. This type of infection may also very commonly affect young patients. The number one most causative pathogen are viruses, ranging from a whole host of viruses between influenza and RSV. The next most common pathogen being bacteria called mycoplasma, which is known to cause a walking pneumonia in younger patients. So what are some of the symptoms of pneumonia? Well, first, one of the most common symptoms is trouble breathing. Because of the decreased ability of the lungs to exchange oxygen due to the infection, other common symptoms include fevers and chills, with a fever being defined as a body temperature over 100.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Patients often have a cough and can produce mucus and rarely blood-tinged sputum. 
and the most common symptom being fatigue, which is experienced by over 90% of patients with a pneumonia. Slightly less commonly, patients experience chest pain. Now, how do you diagnose a pneumonia? Physical exam findings when you're in a doctor's office are very important, such as being able to auscultate your chest through a stethoscope, listening for signs of an infection or infected airways that produce different types of sounds, such as crackles, ronchi, or wheezing. Care providers may also be able to use imaging, such as a chest x-ray, in order to image the lungs and demonstrate any focal consolidations or patchy infiltrations like we were talking about earlier. Here is redemonstration of a chest x-ray depicting a consolidation within the lungs, meaning that there is something there that should not be. This patient may also be having fevers, cough, and producing phlegm, highly concerning for a pneumonia. We're actually able to do laboratory assessments such as checking a complete blood cell count in order to check the white blood cell count because if this is high that means the body is fighting off an infection. White blood cells are responsible for fighting any infections or pathogens in our body that should not be there. Other laboratory assessments include checking the blood for actual antibodies which is our body's response to certain pathogens. So how do you treat a pneumonia? Well that really depends on the pathogen. If it's a bacterial pneumonia, we can treat with antibiotics. Viruses, however, are a little more complicated. Typically, you're treating the symptoms. However, in certain cases, we actually can treat the virus. For example, if it's influenza, we can try to help the body with Tamiflu in order to slow down the virus's replication. What does the recovery look like for a patient with pneumonia? That really depends on the patient's age and health, however without too many confounding factors typically ranges between one to two weeks or longer. I hope that was helpful information for you. Please like and subscribe for more videos and please stay healthy.